BC, we Garrett. are here. <laughs> we're here what at my a, house. We're here at your house. Again. Yeah. You know, uh, I've already done that. I brought you here, yeah. so I can't do that again. Baby most has necessitated a lot of travel for this guy. <laughs> it's great. I don't know. It's fun. It is we're episode it is. 10, which is weird for me just because I feel like this, it doesn't feel like we've done 10 episodes of the show. Hey, Google, stop. Sorry, I, for, I, I, I <laughs> forgot I Google, left the music stop. playing. Sorry. Uh, I... I does not feel like we've done ten of these. It I don't know not. what you. It, but I mean, it's, I guess it does. Or nine, I guess. It feels like we've done like seven. Yeah, yeah. It feels like there's a couple lost episodes that are not lost, but <laughs> they're out there. Um, There'll be a playlist right up here. Yeah, you find all of them. Um, so if you haven't seen the show, okay, with this show, like, it's one of what the have you been doing? The silliest shows that I think for mead related content, um, and that's. It's also educational, though. We hope. <laughs> it's supposed to be. So we bring, uh, BC and I bring bottles of mead to one another that we don't know, well, we might know about based off conversations, but we don't tell each other what we brought. And so the goal of the show is to drink things and tell each other what we taste in each other's meads. And um, it's just a good way for us to better our palate, mm -hmm. aka what the show is called, but also to talk about mead and hopefully give some vocabulary or tell you what to not to say, not to say about mead. So here's what I brought on the side of the screen. And BC's is over here. And of course, again, we're not sharing with each other what we have. In fact, mine's covered. Let's go and do some pouring. Let's do it. I'm excited about this one. So this is, uh, yeah. I can spoil a little bit. This is the recipe I've been working on. Oh. So this is, this is not yet I can on spoil. my channel. This is not yet on my channel. <laughs> How exciting. <laughs> <laughs> All or right. Maybe at the time of the posting, I don't know. But um, okay, so in in our at least my left hand, I'm gonna put my left is mine. I think that's what I. So have yours here. is more clear than mine. Mm -hmm. And in it right hands is is BC's. Okay. So of course, let's do some aroma checks. Um, since you're the clear of the two, let's start with yours. Okay. <laughs> Reward clarity. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm told that clarity doesn't matter. <laughs> So that's what I heard on the internet Facebook group. There's a lot of group experts there. You got to listen to them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this nose is super interesting. And I'm, I, I'll be disappointed in you if you can't pick out the magic get, ingredient in this one. I'm getting like a, it, my nose is thinking peppery or piney, like aromatic here. I think the nose is, is could use some work on this recipe. It's it's very subtle, and yeah. based on what's in here, I really want it to scream at me a little bit, but it's subtle. And I'm, I'm having a hard time picking past that. It's a, a pepperyness um, and a, a piney kind of like almost evergreen, like a resinous. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. which is interesting. I get that a little bit. I can't. I'm having a hard time getting past that. <laughs> like to, to find, it has some like sweetness to it, but I'm like, I'm not identifying that or just saying too much about it. I'm just yeah. trying to find a unique aroma, which that is unique. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got really close down <laughs> in there. And the closer you get, the more you pick that up. But just sitting on top of the glass here, the nose is pretty subtle on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not bad. It's not like you're not getting a fusel. You're not getting something right. that's like burning your nose right. and going off. Oh. It's um, just not big and in your face. Yeah. All right, switching to mine. Check okay. Ours. Yeah. I saw a comment on one of your videos that we're supposed to like chew some coffee or drink some coffee before we do tastings something to, like that. to clear our palate out or something. Should I have brewed some Folgers Maybe before so. we got here? <sighs> this is very different. Is it? I feel like it's pretty similar. Really? I mean, there's a softness in there. There's a vanilla or an oak or something in there, I feel like. But it, it has that bright acid note mm -hmm. that I get in this one. Yeah. But it, there's definitely a softness. Yeah. Yeah, the, this one, yours has a more... And I don't mean this in a... When we say sharp, sometimes it sounds negative. It has a more sharp... Uh, mm -hmm. A more aggressive aroma. Where this one, mine feels a little more sweet, yeah, rounded. Yeah, yeah, pillowy. Yeah, yeah. Any other notes? 
it's got a like a little bit of a fruit note in there which could be from the honey it could be from the base uh-huh i don't know till i taste it mm -hmm. it's got a nice cohesive nose though it's it i can tell that it's going to be sweet and refreshing and and have some some big flavor mm -hmm. uh I'm kind of I'm, I'm I'm excited. Which one are you gonna start with? You choose. Let's start with mine. Okay, starting with VCs. Whoa, the nose is sweet, but it's definitely dry. It's got like a oh, why is this reminding me? Oh, what was in that one meat? <laughs> Juniper, junipery. That's that's where my brain like that greeny uh, noses. It's got a spice taste in that regard. Um, I don't pick up any identifiable, like I, I feel like I get a, a slight juiciness, but mm -hmm. it's not a bright like, oh, that's apple juice or that's pear juice or that's whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm trying, those are, those malic acid fruits are where my brain are at right now. Is that right now? It's interesting you talk about pininess or, or, or a resinous kind of character. Cause I would not have said those words the last time I tasted this, but now that you've put it in my brain, I'm like, oh yeah, I can see how like. This, <laughs> this, this ingredient weird. that I know yeah. about tastes like this thing you're tasting. Mm -hmm. It's got a little bit of like a orange pithy um, mm -hmm. uh, grip, but also acidity. Like I get a little bit of that. Not like citric acid to me is obviously bright, mm -hmm. but a orange peel does not present bright citric acid notes to me. It mm -hmm. gives more of like a, a dark but yeah. tropical -y. There is, I like that you said dark. There is a dark character mm -hmm. in here. There's something in there that kind of grabs those bright notes and drags them down a little bit. Yeah. You know, I don't mind, I don't mind that it is as dry as it is because it has a lot of character, a lot of, a lot of um, moving character, but there is, there, there's, I'm having a hard time pinpointing specific characters there. Yeah. It's pretty well rounded. There is that orange, um, uh, not, I'm gonna say orange, but uh, like a zest, zestiness mm -hmm. in there that mm -hmm. I can't, I don't know what, what fruit that would be. Cause <laughs> okay. you can zest a lot of fruits. <laughs> you sure can. All, All right, right. Switch. let's switch off to yours. I'm expecting something totally different. I think that's probably fair. <laughs> The sweetness is on the whole other end of the spectrum. <laughs> yes. yes. Yours is drier. Dry, <laughs> if not semi, whatever. Mine's sweet. Hmm. There is a definitely what you would call a juiciness <laughs> to this one. It is sweet with a little bit of tartness. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a big, like, open armed kind of character there uh -huh. like it kind of kind of pulls you in a little bit in a way that like it makes you kind of want to just like down the glass not yeah. sip at it like a hard cider would like a yeah. sweet hard cider it does yes i agree it has that those those uh, that note this is very good like it's it's like again i could just like drink a pint glass of this mm -hmm. i almost want it to be sparkling though yeah like i want a little bit of a zing to it mm-hmm because this, what this reminds me of, honestly, is like a red apple ale, oh, or yeah. or something in that vein. That's like thick, like thicker than you might want it to be. Mm -hmm. and it's not carbonated. Mm -hmm. uh, I think carbonation would thin it out just a little bit, but it's it's really refreshing. I think that it also it has to me. This has um, an, an okay amount of acid mm -hmm. balance to it. Obviously, carbonating creates its own thing and, and for people who don't know it adds carbonic acid which is something that adds a little refreshingness to things which is why you know uh, carbonated water might feel a little more refreshing is because there's this carbonic acid but mm -hmm. also adds a smidge of brightness mm -hmm. to your brew mm -hmm. it helps it carry around it gives it some lift obviously mm -hmm. co2 hmm you get any identifiable flavors from this it tastes like apple juice which who freaking knows you, <laughs> i mean you ferment a lot of apples i can't imagine that you would have brought like an apple mead with you but it definitely tastes like apple juice 
I will say there is an interesting varietal of honey used in this. That's not a spoiler because there's a lot of kinds of honey. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that I'm picking out a varietal of honey. If I had to guess, I would guess something that's got some of those candy kind of notes, mm. uh, like Tupelo mm -hmm. uh, or Gallberry, something fun like that. Yeah. But it's very cohesive. It's very cohesive. It's not like sometimes you get a mead and it's like flavor, 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 flavor. This one is kind of its own big ball of flavor. Yeah. It's a very comforting mead. It is. I mean, it's, it's really cold good. night, you know. Oh, yeah, the... dude. Put this in like a mug and heat it up I and almost, sit by the fire. I almost wonder, yeah, if I've never had a mead that I've been able to mull. Mm. Like, and so I wonder, this one reminds me or makes me think, maybe I could mull yeah. this. Yeah, I'd be here for that. Just a little bit of mulling spices mm -hmm. and a mug with our weather. You know, it's 10 degrees outside. It'd be pretty good. <laughs> Might be, I have a couple more bottles of this. It's quite good. It's very cohesive. So let's start with some fresh off of mine, since your mind's already there. Do you have any guesses on what this one could possibly be? I think Ooh. I don't. I, it it tastes like a sizer. So okay. that's that's my guess. Sizer. I can't guess at a honey varietal, but that's fair though, because I mean they're all different, but also they. Unless you're really looking. Yeah, I, I mean, what I taste tastes like apple juice to me. Uh, maybe pear juice, but it's very good. So I'm gonna say it's a sizer. Okay. What do, what do we have here? So my brain started thinking of the time that we made, you made a saffron mead that had like some, some saltiness oh, yeah. to it. And Vaguely I don't know if this. it's just coming off of sweetness mm -hmm. here. But I get a little, I'm not thinking saffron, but I was thinking the, there's like, man, I forgot about that. I almost for, like wonder if there's like a, it has a little bit of like, not salt, not directly salty, but it has more, maybe that's just me mixing that with tannin, pulling, you know, this has more tannin, so it's pulling more moisture. It doesn't have the taste of salt. I don't know, my brain kind of went to there for a second. Um, I'm struggling with this, honestly. I still get those same notes I'd mentioned earlier. It's like a, a, a pithy orange mm -hmm. z uh, zestiness in there. As it sat and it's breathed some, I don't think I pick up as much of those previous mm -hmm. notes. Like the peppery thing is gone. Like mm -hmm. I don't pick that up at all. But the there's that, that piney aroma that I mentioned is not as apparent. Mm -hmm. Definitely it's switching from this back to this. The flavors feel bigger now. Yes. This really softened my palate quite a bit. I'm I'm really struggling with this one. You've you've brought a hard one for episode two because <laughs> like the flavor, like I feel, you know, I think if I back sweeten this just a little bit more, it might have been easier for you to identify what's in here. It's got a very light sweetening. Yeah, like you said, it you for you it feels kind of dry. I'm 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 searching. Computing. It's <laughs> a math meme. I'm not giving up yet. I gotta. I need a moment to collect my thoughts. Well, let's slowly zoom in on your face while you Don't think worry. about this it. This will be the next two minutes that I try to figure this out. We'll slowly <laughs> zoom. I'll make it hard for myself. I'm just like. <laughs> yeah, so you have to track yourself. Wow. Just really, all down here. <laughs> This is going to be some impressive motion. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to regret that. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to this. <laughs> Man, that's a heavy pour. You must really enjoy this mead. This is this is kicking my butt a little bit. It's just I think th the reason I selected this one is because I felt like it would. And here's I will spoil it a little bit. I know you have brewed with the main ingredient in this. I ha I know you have. That's that's helpful, and also it may have been on it. It it may have shown up on a palate expanders episode. I don't recall, but I know you have brewed with this ingredient. But this one is so unusual by mead standards. I don't think the recipe is there yet. I think there's definitely some improvement, but it's also an ingredient that I'm not really worried about some other mead tuber creating a yeah. recipe about because it's that oddball. I I cannot pe get past the pithy orange. I'm thinking it's, it is 
it's got some uh, very, very like warm possible spice in there. But it, if it is, then it's like something that is to me not very. Uh, it's, I, I'm picking up on that. And knowing what it is, it's I'm, it's tripping me out that you're saying words, and then I'm finding them here. <laughs> it's weird. It's hopefully, I'm not creating just <laughs> randomly things, but I'm I'm stuck. It, it, you've you've officially stumped me. I'm gonna go. You have to guess. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. <laughs> By stumped, mean meaning I don't I don't think I'm right. <laughs> yeah, I mean I don't think I'm right about yours either. It's a a. a even without you, with you he, yielding that it's not this, it is a warm spice, um, like almost like a it tastes kind of like if like you had a dry, very very dry Joe's Ancient Orange. Oh, okay. That's where my brain is at right now. Which right. hopefully I'm not um, offending you. No, you're not offending me at all. That's my guess. Probably I know I'm not right. I'm gonna go ahead and yield to that. So let's go ahead and tear the bandaid off. What okay. is this thing? So I left a little clue out for you. This is a black limes mead. Oh, okay. There are one black lime per gallon, mm. okay. crushed in primary. And then there is just a little bit of fresh lime zest and lime juice in secondary. Okay, so I was, I was picking that, that up, mm -hmm. yeah. And then it was back sweetened with about a pound of honey. But I think if I was going to do this again, I would double that. I, yeah, I I, he, I get it now. It makes sense. It's so deep. Mm -hmm. Again, like it grabs those fresh flavors and just pulls them down. Yes. And that's why I added the lime zest and juice in secondary because I was like, God, this is such a dark mead. I need something up, up here. Up the top. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's it's it is good. I I um I don't know what I would change with the recipe. I almost almost want it just a smidge sweeter. You know, even if there were five points or something. You know, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, mm -hmm. like, did you back sweeten with honey? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, like alfalfa honey, I think. Okay. I, I was gonna say like a bright fruity, like or florally honey, like that mm -hmm. would be. Um, yeah, I think That's, it needs more sweetness. The the black limes really provide a lot of tannin. Mm -hmm. I forgot about black limes. You're like <laughs> you've used this before, and yes, you're right. I think there was an episode where I had one that was a um, black cherry, black lime boche, mm -hmm. and it would taste like a little bit like cherry limeade. Yeah, like it a did. like a fancy cherry limeade, which reminds me, I want to do that again. What are you begging for? Get out of here. We're almost done. Go. He's talking to the baby. So. Yeah, <laughs> she crawled in. <laughs> Samantha, hey, go lay down. We'll be done in like thirty seconds. Thank you. Um, Old dogs. It it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I'm a little bummed that I didn't like. I think I was close. You were close. But I was not. You talked about orange I, pith. I, I was trying so hard to find some countering ingredient because, like, not that I didn't think you would do such such a simple thing. I mean, truly, it's lime and lime and lime. Yeah. Um, but and, um, I was like, hey, he's got to have had something else in here that's just like hiding, hiding in that world. But I do wonder the uh, I don't know if you noticed the green, the mm -hmm. evergreen, the well, that resinous. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think it's that that when you do a black lime, this tar yeah seeps out of it. And it is really dark and resinous and like tree sappy. Yeah. You know? And so I, I see where you're pulling some of those flavors from. It's very interesting. There's a lot of notes there that uh, you have to try. And part of this is it, uh, dehydrating limes is probably not the easiest thing for it takes everybody. A week. It takes a little while. It takes a week. I don't know if you can buy them. Um, I you don't can really get them know. at Mediterranean markets sometimes, but you have to be careful. A lot of times they've been boiled in salt water oh. before they've been dried. Whereas I stab mine with a knife and then put them in the dehydrator. If you can get one that's not been super salted, yeah, <laughs> you know maybe it's good for your water chemistry. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> it's worth a shot because there's a lot of notes here that uh, are interesting and that can actually pair well. I think that yes. this opens up the doors to a lot of opportunities. Yes, I kind of want to do a lime base like a Skeeter pea type uh -huh. mead, but using these 
for the tannin element to, yeah. to pull that down some. I think there's a lot of room to play with black limes, and it's like in mead, I think it's undiscovered country. Yes. Love it. Are you ready to flip to mine? Yeah. Other side of the fence, completely. Totally different flavor profile. So he thought, thinks, think it's a sizer, which makes a lot of sense because it does have those notes. Now, this is a pear and macadamia nut blossom. Dang it, honey. I did say pear. <laughs> you did. I didn't settle on pear. But so, it's got those, those flavors, pear and macadamia nut. Yes. Now, I will say, and I will yield, that this did not use, like, cut up pears i use the vintners wine base uh, for that oh, so there okay. there are notes that you're getting from that that are apple juicy and yeah. you know because those do have um some other i believe uh, some other alternative sugars in there interesting um because they're, they're not just like you know they pureed five mm -hmm. gallons worth of pears like i mean they're having to do it on a commercial scale. i feel pretty good about that yeah. I feel pretty good about my because I, I agree. I agree. The the honey is what's interesting here to me. It's got a lot. I've never brewed with it. It's fun. I've tasted it. I've just never brewed with it, and I. It does add some intrigue mm -hmm. there. So you were close. I mean, you were. I was in the same you were fruit as, literally family. Literally as close to. Those are called palm fruits, by uh -oh, the way. Oh, palm fruit. Yeah, uh, hmm. apples, pears, those weird. Apple things that they have in Europe. <laughs> what are those called? I, I don't know. <laughs> quince. Mm. Quince. They're all in that family of fruits. I brewed with quince on a Brews Lab once. Interesting. Quince. I've, I've never done anything with it. Never it's, really I mean, it. I could only get it in the form of jam. Uh, yeah. And uh, we don't. You're not going to get. We it don't here, grow yeah. quince here. <laughs> yeah. I would say you were. You were. I mean, pretty much right. It's like in the ballpark. It. it was like, you know, like whenever they hit a home run. But then it like bounces back in the park. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's that's how, what happened. Curiosity: How old was yours? Six months, probably. Okay, mine was um, October. Okay, that's that's great. Mm -hmm. That's good turnaround time for something that's this cohesive. Yeah, it and it is oaked. I did have I did oak it partially, <sighs> so you got the vanilla. Okay, you got okay. the vanilla in there it. as well. It, I don't taste it on the palate, but I can smell it on the nose. Yeah, Those. it just adds a little more of that. And, um, roundness to it. Mm -hmm. I really like oaking because obviously it adds flavor, but it does just, and when we talk about balancing, you're applying more tannin, which mm -hmm. can therefore push down other things that are overwhelming. And previously, this added sweetness level, which is sweet, it's very um, sweet, was cloying. And I was like, what can I do to change this? Okay, well, I, let's put some oak in. And I do think I might have adjusted with a little bit more either tartaric or malic acid. Okay. To do there are big that. malic acid flavors in here, which is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I put it in everything, it, it seems like. Uh, but I just really love how, how it just goes back and forth across your tongue. Malic acid just really is a smoothing element um, that, you know, don't sleep on that. Acids can, <laughs> acids can change a lot they, about the profile of something. I mean, balancing in general. You, you have a great video on this, and I'm going to point to it because I you've... Do. you've done a lot of the research on it but balancing your brew can um, not just make it taste better but for those of you who want to compete and enter com competitions like we have our, our mead stampede like balanced brews go further oh, than yeah. unbalanced brews and oh yeah it is a that's, simple the, that's the thing and a mead stampede that i ding the most yes because it was like you would have a couple of balanced ones and then you hit an unbalanced one and it really demonstrates what that fine tuning of the balance knobs can really do to take something from good to excellent. Yes, I, I completely agree. And I think that if you want to balance things, then there's no magic recipe for, for everything. So, you know, we've recipe tested and created yeah. things, but for you, as you develop recipes, you have to trial and error and just do things um, and kind of test yourself. I think that's part of it, is you have to test yourself and see if you can figure out how to combat the problems you experience. Because there's a lot of problems in every mead, but you can fix most problems. Yep. yep. So, a lot of magic can happen in secondary. <laughs> don't be afraid of, of adding things in to make your brew better. Yep. All right, BC, this has been a lot of fun, and I, I you know, I swing and a miss, but I am, I will yield that this is a, a very good, and I'm excited to see the future recipe of this meat. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> so um, if you would like to check out BC's channel, of course, it'll be down in the description, it's doing the most. Um, and we'll be back. I don't know when episode 11 will be, but we've gone through 10 episodes and I, 
I want to continue to do this because Happy this is too much episode. fun. I thought I, trying to throw some curveballs. Some balloons here. falling out of the ceiling or but something. Don't worry, I got the post. Yeah. Oh, here's. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. I can't. I can't edit that in. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Have That's a right. good one. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>